Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, lime harlan and more importantly the use of lime. Uh, now if anybody's ever took a wee walk around Edinburgh uh, and seen that grey uh, devil's cream that's scattered over every building that's causing a lot of decay and a lot of issues, uh, this is one of the reasons why the lime centre generally came around. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, training on the use of limes and such like that. Mitchell here is a building surveyor. Um, he does a lot of uh, building surveys, and inspections, investigations on the use of obviously limes and why the building is kind of deteriorating at the rate that it is. Um, so lime they generally start off with uh, comes in many forms. Um, so this is a limestone. This is a marble, this is a limestone, and this is an oyster shell. Uh, and all of these, if you burn it uh, at 800 degrees Celsius, will give you a lime material at the end of the day. Um, so again, you get many uh, different forms of limes, uh, from high setting strength limes to low setting flexible breathable limes, uh, which obviously become important here in Scotland because uh, the weather is generally not the best, so we can kind of adapt and suit our limes uh, for our buildings and such. So, when you burn these limes in a kiln, uh, you turn that uh, calcium carbonate, which is what the limestone in the shell is, into a calcium oxide. So this is a quick lime material. Now, if anybody's googled lime, you might hear the fault limes or quick limes and such like that. Uh, and these are the materials that have an exothermic reaction and turn into calcium hydroxide. Um, now once you've slaked your lime you can either make it into a putty or into a powder and that's generally what we buy at our builder merchants. So putty limes, powder limes and such like that. Uh, and then you'd be combining that with your sands. Um, so these are two sample of sands that you would generally do harlan with. Now all your harlan are with sharp grade concrete sands. And you're never harling with a building sand or a fine sand. You need the thicker grains to give you that lovely texture that you get on uh, our harls. Um, so once you've combined them, you then obviously get uh, your wet mortar. Um, so this is a mortar that I've uh, made from sand that I've got from a beach and limestone that I've burnt myself. Uh, best mortar in the world. Uh, I'm not selling it obviously. Uh, but that's going to be the greatest mortar ever. Uh, now, the reabsorption of air, or carbon dioxide, sets that material, yeah? So that turns the calcium carbonate, which is your limestone, you burn it into a calcium oxide, you slake it uh, into a calcium hydroxide, you add your sand, you mix it together, you point your wall, you harrow your wall, it turns back into a calcium carbonate. So it starts off as a limestone, it turns generally back into a limestone-based material. And it uses all four elements. So you've got earth, fire from the kiln, water from the slaking, and air from the setting. So it's the most natural current building material that we've got today. Um, so, like I say, all your limes require air to set. Yeah? Uh, so a day like today where your wall's gonna get wet, that's gonna start with air and such like that. So with your lime works, it does take uh, quite a bit of curing and such like that to make sure that it's gonna stand uh, our first harsh winters. Uh, now obviously wet waivers and such like that it just means that our curing is going to be a lot longer so if anybody's ever had a price from a stonemason to do any lime works you might wonder why why is that guy got one day of work and he's got two weeks programmed into the schedule and again that's all preps curing making sure everything's going to go off at a good rate. Um, now with Harlan, uh, Harlan generally comes in a three coat system so you've got your first coat, which is a pricking up coat, and that's just a thin dash with a wet mix, single grain thickness, yeah? So you're only three to four mil on your first coat of harrow, yeah? And what that's doing is that's giving you a good key to hold the rest of the coats, and it's also giving you a unifying coat. Now instead of everything being brick, stone, slate, bit of mortar, it's all now one material, yeah? So it means that the drying rate your background suction rate is all going to be the exact same right the way throughout. Then you've got your straightening coat. Now depending on what wall you're harling or what building you're harling, you might need a straightening coat or you might not, depending on how flat your wall is and such like that. 
Um, so again, your straightening go, you would run that through. And then your finish go. Uh, so your finish go is a lot similar to your first go. So it's a wet dash that you're generally chucking on. And same again, it's single grain thickness. Um, so once I've kind of talked through this, you can kind of come up and see the, the size of the coats and such like that. So that would be a typical free coat harrow. Yeah? Now harling, that comes from the Scots word hurling, where you're hurling the material at the wall. Uh, and the reason that we kind of introduced harrows is because we need that extra layer of protection on our buildings. Like I say, the weather uh, is unforgivable here, so we need that extra layer of protection to not also stop or reduce water getting into your building, but also increase the drying rate of your building. Now, if you leave a texture finish like that on your property, because you've got a bigger surface area, what it helps to do is draw more moisture to the surface for evaporation. So a harrowed building is going to dry a lot quicker than just a bare stone building. So you might think you're encapsulating a lot of wet material onto a building, but you're, uh, you're actually increasing the drying rate of that building. And again, it's giving you those extra layers of protection, especially if you've got a lime wash, because if your lime wash is protecting your harling, your harling is protecting your pointing, your pointing is protecting your stonework. Yeah? Now you might find, or you might see a lot of harrowed buildings on the west coast of Scotland. Now, if you've ever been to the west coast of Scotland, Again, it's generally pretty wet, so again, having extra layers of protection, especially on those coastal towns and, and such, again, it's just necessary. Um, and again, it's not going to wear away all at one rate, it wears away layer by layer. Because your lime wash, that's your weakest coat, so that'll wear away after 10 years, 15 years, depending on how much weathering it gets. Your top coat, again, that wavers away after. Your straightening coat, that wavers away, your pricking a coat, that wavers away so 200 300 years down the line oh i need to redo my harrow but if you catch that <laughs> earlier so within five years you give it another coat of lime wash you've conserved that building again yeah so again it's all about maintenance rather than let it all wear away at a kind of a steady rate just keep on top of that maintenance put another coat of lime wash on if it needs it and then your building's back to good yeah so with the um the lime based materials and such this is a, the calcium oxide so it doesn't matter what material you burn so whether it's a hard limestones the shells marble that's all going to give you a calcium oxide so that's your first stage of a lime based material uh, now calcium oxide uh, is a, a great material but it's also a highly volatile material um, because it's an oxide uh, and water is H2O, so two oxides. These, uh, the combination of these material give you an exothermic uh, reaction of the material. So it means it's going to boil and bubble as soon as it comes into the presence of moisture. Now, quick lime can reach 100 degrees within three seconds with the presence of moisture, 250 degrees within seven seconds with the presence of moisture, and in ideal circumstances can reach 400 degrees during the slaking process. Yeah? So again, it's quite a highly volatile material, quite a dangerous material. Us as humans, we are 75% moisture. That we have some moisture. So again, making sure PPE is on. Um, so, slaking this material into more, a more manageable material. Um, obviously need your water and uh, your quick line. Said they want to go. <laughs> now, any time you're slaking, quick line, quick line goes into the bath uh, after the water. Uh, because if you add water to quick line, that's when it becomes uncontrollable, and that's when this tent starts to melt, things go pop, uh, and bad news happens. So, when you're adding this material in, That's it reached 100 degrees. Hundred and fifty. Two hundred degrees. Two hundred and fifty. And so on. 
So this is the slaking process. So what we're generally doing is turning this calcium oxide into a calcium hydroxide, yeah? Because I've added quite a lot of water to this, I've broken this down, or broken it down into a putty, yeah? Mix that with a piece of sand, dash your wall, dash your wall, plaster your wall, point your wall, build your wall, all from a piece of stone that you set on fire and added water to it, yeah? And then a builder merchant charges you a fortune for it. <laughs> so, this is a sleeking process. Once this becomes a bit more controlled, I'll get people up just to feel the side of the bath. On the outside, please, not the inside. <laughs> And you feel the general heat that it's, it's, it's kind of got up to. So if you want to feel just the side of the bath here, you'll feel a good bit of heat. Just be a wee bit careful. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've slaked this down to my calcium hydroxide or my lime putty. Yeah. Um, so again, because this is a non-hydraulic material, if I keep this sealed of air, it'll never go off. Because this material solely relies on air. Yeah. Now this mix that I've got here, this mix is nine years old. Uh, that we made uh, for the Botanic Gardens. Uh, now we've kept a hold of this, I've added a bit of water to it, mixed it up. Because it's been starved of air or sealed in a tub, it's never going to go off, yeah? All your lime-based materials require air to set, yeah? If it's getting starved of air, so it's saturated or you've kept it in a tub or you've kept it wrapped too tight, it's never going to start that setting process. So it relies on the air and that's the only thing it needs to do is absorb the air for carbonation. Now, this material here uh, is calcite. And this is the formation of the crystal growth that grows in between your sand grains to bind everything together. Because lime is a binder, and this is material that grows through this. So quite a glass-like material. Um, so that's what grows through uh, all your, your mortars to bind it all together. Uh, and if you have a look at the limestones, you'll see it's got speckles. That's that glass like material, so that's that calcite content. All you're generally doing is melting that down and then it regrows when you mix it in your sand. Yeah? So the absorption of the air that grows this calcite content through your mortars. And this is why every lime wash building is a lot brighter. Because again, you've got that that glossy uh, high sheen material. If you've ever looked at Abbey Strand there, a uh, lovely example of Harrow uh, and Lime Wash, and super super bright in the sun, which we might get <laughs> in a wee minute. So, that's the materials. And again, if you're making harrow, uh, harling materials, you need your sharp concrete sand. That becomes important for your textures, yeah? Not only for your pricking up coat, but to fill out for your second coat and to give you your texture for your final coat to help evaporate a lot of that moisture content, yeah? So, I have got this lovely nine-year-old mix here. Uh, now, I'm not going to lie to you, Harlan is a messy job. Um, you can be as clean and OCD as you want to be, you're <laughs> going to end up head to toe uh, in Harlan. You have to throw the material at the wall because you need that texture finish. Yeah, um, There's no getting away uh, from it. So. For Harlan, yeah, you need a Harlan trowel, um, so this is a typical Harlan trowel that you generally use. Square end with a stop end so you can scoop your material and dash onto the wall here. Um, what a lot of people do, they might round off uh, the corners of the Harlan trowel just to give you more spread of your material. Uh, I personally think it doesn't really make too much of a difference, but some guys swear by it. Um, now, with Harlan, um, like I say, you're needing quite a thin spread, but you're needing good compaction 
on the material because you want this to be on your wall for 200 years plus, yeah? Um, so there's no point just giving it a little flick, you need to give it a quite hard dash. Uh, and if you have a look at how wet this material is, it's pretty much like water, and again, that's kind of the consistency that you need for your lime works. So, when you're dashing on, you're not coming off the side of the trail, again, you want a good spread of the material. So you're giving it a good flick on. Now, I'm not giving it a good Happy Gilmer run up. <laughs> Just a nice little flick at the end there. And you can see that good spread that I've got there, yeah? You can even go back hand, uh, dash it on. So, that would be your pricking up coat, or your scud coat. Um, and again, that's to give you that good key for your straightening coat. Okay? So that would be your first coat. Um, now, between each coat, you need to leave a minimum of a week. Yeah? Colder conditions, you're between two weeks per coat. Again, you need to get the reabsorption of the air to start that carbonation process or to start the set. Yeah? If you harrow too many coats in a short space of time, it just means the air's got so much thickness of material to travel through to start that carbonation process. Now, if all your harlem mixes, you start off with your strongest mix and then you get weaker as you come out the building, yeah? So for this coat, that's a one-to-one -one mix, yeah? Because again, you need that to be the strongest coat because that's got to hold on to the substrate or your wall and also hold on to your straightening coat, yeah? Straightening coat, that's a one-to-two mix, yeah? Finished coat, one-to-two-and-a-half. So I've got weaker in lime content as I come out the building, yeah. yeah. And again, that's just so that when things wear away, the top coat wears away first because that's the most sacrificial element, then the straightening coat, then your pricking up coat. Yeah, so you want that to wear away in layers. Now the thing with cementitious harrows and renders is that just all comes off in one go. That's a big problem if that's going to land on your head. It's going to ruin your plans for that night. Yeah. Um, so you want that to generally wear away uh, at a slower rate and just thin layers. Yeah. For your straightening coat, you'd be coating on just with a hawk and trowel. And then using some straight edges just to iron out the building, just to give a uniform general coat. Um, now I like to use uh, this straight uh, edge here, or Darby because it's got serrations and those little serrations just give you a nice key to hold on to your top coat yeah now it doesn't have to be these again people make them up out of pieces of timber uh, bits of door iron and such like that again as long as it irons out the building that's all you're generally looking for uh, and obviously the longer the straight edge the more flat your walls generally going to be the shorter the straight edge, the more undulations that you're generally going to get on your property. Now, if you've ever looked at a stone property in Scotland, it's never really flat or straight or such. Um, so again, shorter straight edges are a bit best. And again, you've paid all that money uh, to have a lovely stone property. You want to see a bit of undulation of stone in there behind it. Um, so these would be your two straight edges. Uh, and again, you'd be iron that flat for your straightening coat till you're quite happy yeah. and then top coat same again uh, that dash but you'd have a, a weaker base mix yeah Absolute caveman technology. Chuck mud at a wall, charge a fortune for it. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's all nothing's changed over the years. You know, you might speed up the process by using a piece of machinery or such like that, but this, the principles are all the same. It has to travel through the air, get hurled at the building uh, for
further hardland. Same again with the materials. There's nothing you can do to speed up the set of the materials. It's a natural reabsorption of the carbon dioxide. That's what sets the material. There's nothing you can really do to speed that up. It just is what it is. That's how it's always been. Again, lime's been around for 10,000 years here in the UK for 2,000 years. Because those pesky Romans came with a lovely lime technology and we've used it ever since. Um, so again, there's nothing you can really generally do to speed that up. Obviously, you've got different strengths of limes for different purposes, but again, it's still the same principle. You need to allow for the reabsorption uh, of the air. Uh, and then, obviously, when you're doing your works, you need to cure the material. Now, lime's quite a fussy material. Uh, it doesn't like to be too hot. It doesn't like to be too, too cold, too wet, too dry. Uh, you know, it's like Goldilocks, it just likes to be in the middle somewhere, yeah. So, Hessians, uh, for your curing, becomes essential. Because uh, if you're working in 28 degrees Celsius, it's quite hot, it's going to dry out your material too quick. You need a presence of moisture in your, your lime-based material just to help that set. Um, so you can dampen your Hessian, which is going to cool the wall down, but also feed the moisture that the limes generally need to set, yeah. Um, now, you get different gradients of hessian. You get some hessian that looks like Ralph as its vest. You can never <laughs> buy that. A good thick gradient of hessian, uh, especially with the, the summer that we've had here, it's been windy and it's been hot. You know, those are the worst conditions for lime. It's just going to dry it, it's going to shrink it, and it's generally going to fall off uh, within the first month. Uh, and same again, if you're getting frosty conditions or colder conditions, that's going to act as a blanket of insulation because any frost is going to settle on your hessian rather than on your lime based material which is obviously perfect because when water freezes it expands you've got a wet material that's going to expand away from the wall and fall off so frost damage and such like that you can limit that just by putting a piece of hessian on it and like i say the best kind of conditions for lime works is when it's dark damp not too hot, not too cold. So everybody else's worst day is a stonemason's best day. That's when he's doing this work. So like I say, with your, your harrows and such like that, it's just all about time, leaving time in between each coat and such like that. And just making sure that you're getting good coverage. And like I say, if you do the, a perfect job picking the, the ideal line, you shouldn't have to come back to that harrow for at least a hundred years. Yeah? Like I say, there's no reason why we're coming across buildings that have got the original hard on for from 300 years ago. So why are we generally struggling now when you've got all the information on this little thing here? You know? So again, we should be at the stage where we are making all the right decisions, performing the best piece of hard in the world. Well, I said, you know. uh, so yeah, that's 